Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming back to Conversations with a Therapist. My name is Jennifer and I am glad you're here as we are going to be answering a question that was raised by one of the therapists in our community. So the question the therapist asked was, how much should I charge for my therapy services? And for those who might not know, there is no standard fee here in Kenya that as a therapist you require to charge for your services. That means people have a lot of freedom to determine how much to charge for their sessions. And that means some people are going to charge extremely high prices and others are going to charge extremely low prices, sometimes no charges at all. And that, I think, to a degree, determines how people perceive therapy as a whole. In this episode, we are going to be talking about what are some of the things that a therapist needs to think about before they set the fees they are going to charge for their therapy services so that they have something to rely on when they're determining, I'm going to charge 5K for my therapy services, like they have some evidence for where that number is coming from and so that they can also be in line with their financial goals. The worst thing is to set fees that cannot support you financially, fees that make it difficult for you to put food on your table. This episode obviously is going to be very helpful to therapists in general and especially those who are contemplating getting into private practice or those who already have a private practice because that means they have the power to determine how much to charge for their sessions. If you are not a therapist and you still want to hang around to understand where we come up with these numbers from, like the thought process you go through as you determine the amount of money to charge you for therapy sessions, then stick around and and listen to the things that we think about before we end up um, setting the price for therapy services. Enough of an introduction, let's get into understanding what you need to think about as you determine the amount of money you need to charge for your therapy services. Before you determine and say it's 5k per session, there are five points you need to think about. The first point is how much does it cost to run the entire business, the type of clients you're going to be working with, your sources of income, the amount of time you want to be away from your business. So you leave days and sick off and public holidays and things like that. And the amount of money you want to make as your salary. When you think about those five points, you're going to be able to determine how much money you need to charge for your therapy sessions. Let's start with the business costs. What does it cost to run a business? It will depend on whether your business is virtual or if your business is purely physical because those two things are going to cost different amounts of money. Let's start with the virtual business. If you're running a virtual business, that is you're offering therapy services purely online. You don't have a physical office. You don't go anywhere to an office to meet clients in person. If it's purely virtual, then there are several things you need to think about um, as you start your your business, your therapy business, before you charge. Um, one of them is insurance. You will need to take your own professional insurance. It's not mandatory, but it is highly encouraged. This, of course, helps you be safe in case you get sued by one of your clients. I know some of these things sound very foreign because our field here in Kenya is still growing. There are many things that have not yet been put in place. But as you continue to grow as a profession, some of these things are going to become mandatory. So if that is something that you're considering doing, you need to have that in your business plan and in your financial plan before you determine how much money you're going to uh, charge clients for therapy sessions. You need to think about your professional membership fees. But at the moment, it's not mandatory that you should be in those associations. If you are in those associations, you have to pay your annual membership fees. I think for KCPA, it's 4500 I could be wrong. Please confirm. Um, And then, other than that, now we have a counselors and psychologists board. So we are paying our professional licensing fees. Every year, depending on what level of education you have, you are going to be paying a certain amount for your license to continue operating in the next year. You will need to pay for things like continuing professional development. These are things that are becoming very common right now. I have seen KCPA running a lot of them. And not just KCPA, I know... In future, the counselors and psychologists board might start expecting you to have gone through several continuing professional development classes for your license to be renewed. Right now, that is not a requirement, but I promise you, it's going to become a requirement. They will want to see that you are advancing every single year. You're learning something new that you can use to help your clients. Something else that's going to come up in your financial plan is going to be supervision and personal therapy. Any therapist who is practicing and they have not gone for personal therapy, As I have previously said, and it's a hill I'm willing to die on, I don't think you should be practicing if you've never been to personal therapy. We all have our issues, and those issues can affect the way therapy goes on for your client. And it's not a one-off thing. It's not that you go for your personal therapy uh, for the first six months of your career, and then after that, you never go back. Remember, you're a human being. 
and just because you know the theories just because you know how therapy works does not mean that you can therapize yourself if that's even a word i know many therapists who rationalize and defend themselves that they are doing okay that they do not have any problems and that they can continue serving clients even when they really really need support and they really need help i highly encourage that you you, you please please go for your own personal therapy something else you need to do is think about your supervision supervision is necessary at all levels of your practice so that you can be giving the best care to you can to your clients another thing you will need to think about is other professional services that you will need for your business this could be maybe you will need a lawyer at some point to draft some legal documents or you will need a, an accountant to make sure that your books are in order you might need to get a graphic designer to make graphics for you for your social media and things like that you might need to get a web developer to build a website for you you might need a social media manager to manage your social media it could be any other professional service that is beyond the work that you're doing by yourself the work that is you offering therapy services those things are going to cost money i am a big advocate for using the free tools that exist but remember those free tools have a limit and that takes me to the next point which is software subscriptions and things along those lines that will help you run your practice it could be that you need to use the zoom that is paid for you're not using the free one because the free one cuts you off at 40 minutes yet your session is running for 50 minutes are you going to be telling your client let's log out and then come back again some of these things you might have to pay for advanced features advertising your business is going to be something that you need to do obviously advertising costs money especially if you are not a content creator if you are going to put your business in a directory of some sort you will need to pay for the premium features because some of these things again have a limit the moment you get a website if somebody is doing it for you you will need to pay them to build your website you will need to pay for the domain name you will need to pay hosting fees you are going to need money for your internet and your airtime above and beyond all these things remember taxes are going to be needed you're always going to be take, paying taxes because you're running a business there's always miscellaneous um, expenditure that comes up anything can fall apart and you need a miscellaneous budget just to make sure that things are running smoothly whether you have clients at the time or you don't have clients at the time those are like the basics of running a virtual therapy business remember all these things do not need to be paid for all at once and remember as i said there are many many free options only that these free options have a limit and you don't want the limits to hinder your capacity to do the work you're trying to do if you want to have your own physical office think about everything i have just spoken about for the virtual business and then on top of that now add number 1 rent for that office you're going to have to pay for business license remember in nairobi in kenya businesses need to have licenses so you might have to go to kanjo and get your business license you will need stationery and office equipment and furniture and therapy supplies depending on even the kind of clients that you work with you might need more therapy supplies than other people so for example let's say you work with kids kids require a different setup in an office than you would set up for an adult this is added expenditure on top of what you are already doing i know there are other things i have not mentioned because maybe i've forgotten them but i am sure you can think about other things that it takes to run a business as you think about the business costs i want you to write them down and put a figure after each item how much will this thing cost how much will this other thing cost how much is licensing going to cost me how much is supervision going to cost me how much is a therapy office going to cost me and do a bit of research so that you are somewhere closer to the real figure than a fictional one as you write these things divide them into costs that are recurring that is things that you pay for either every week or you pay for every month or you pay for every year and things that are one off now that you have gone through the things that you need for you to start the business you've gone through the business costs you can go to point 2 the type of clients you're going to work with and the type of therapy that you're going to offer some of the clients that you work with will be able to afford you and others will not be able to afford you for example if you decide you're going to work with let's say campus students you're not expecting campus students to have a lot of disposable income to afford you when your fees are like let's say 5k or 10k per session that's outrageous for them especially if they are the ones paying for the sessions not maybe a parent or a guardian your years of experience and your expertise and your training and your qualifications should also reflect in your fees the more experienced a therapist is the more in demand they usually are anybody who has been in the industry longer will probably say that they have more experience they will probably say that they have gotten more qualifications and more training as they have advanced through the years if for example you've been in the industry for 20 years your fees need to reflect that you are super experienced i'm trusting that you have been in the industry for 20 years actually becoming better at your job there are people who have been in the industry for 20 years but they only 
got better in the first year. And in the 19 years after that, they have been repeating the same thing they were doing in the first year of their experience. So they're not really experienced. They just have years under their belt. And I mean, some of these things are very obvious. But anyway, I digress. Number three, your sources of income. My question for you here is, is therapy services the only source of income that you have? Is that the only thing that is putting food on your table? Is that the only thing that is sorting your bills in your personal life and in your business? If therapy is your only source of income, it's going to be very tricky for you, especially if a client cancels a session. The other thing you need to think about is the time you want to spend away from your private practice, your business. Leave days, public holidays are those days that you're going to be working. Are you going to be working over Christmas? Are you going to be working over Easter? If you fall sick, are you still going to come to therapy? Does it mean that you're going to be working 24-7? Something else many people don't think about when they're thinking about this time away is the fact that there are things that take up a lot of time and we underestimate just how much time they take. For example, admin work, paperwork, you're doing your client case notes. When you're doing your personal therapy, you will be away from the therapy room. When you are in supervision, when you're out there researching something around a client's issue that came up in therapy and you're not familiar enough with it, time you will spend away in meetings and trainings. Maybe you have gone for those continuous professional development. Even if it's a virtual event, it's still going to take time away from you being in therapy with a client. Last but definitely not least, you need to think about your salary. Will you pay yourself from the business or are you willing to not earn money from your business maybe for the first year till your business is stable? If you are willing to pay yourself, then how much money are you going to pay yourself? This figure needs to reflect in your financial plan and it needs to be adjusted to the cost of living. Now that we are done with doing all the math, remember everything we were talking about in the beginning. You wrote down a list of the expenses um, in your business. You wrote down your salary expectations. You have a rough figure of those two things. For example, running the business entirely is going to cost you, let's say, 50,000 shillings a month. And maybe you've decided you want to pay yourself 50,000 shillings a month as your salary. Then it means at the end of every month, you need to be making 100,000 shillings. Think about how many days in that month will you be working. So this goes back to the question about the leave days and the time away. Roughly, let's say you're working only 20 days in a month because the other days are taken up by other things in your life. So it means you have 20 days to make 100,000 shillings. Otherwise, your business is going to go under. You divide that 100,000 by those 20 days and you get 5,000 shillings. That is what you need to be making per day. How you make these 5,000 shillings is really upon you. So you can decide you're going to have only one session per day and you're going to be charging your clients 5,000 shillings. You can decide you're going to be having two sessions per day. And these two sessions, you're going to be charging 2,500 um, each. Or you can decide, you know what? I want to, ch to work with as many clients as possible and I want to serve many people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge my therapy sessions at 500 shillings. That opens up a lot of people who can afford you. These figures will change as you start your private practice, as you keep doing the things that you're doing. All this is fictional and hypothetical. When you reach the ground, things can look very different. Your figure might go up, your figure might go down. Your number of clients that you see in a day might go up, the number of clients that you see in a day might go down. You're working with hypotheticals and you're praying that these hypotheticals translate into reality the moment you finally get to do the therapy sessions with your clients. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, there are other ways to supplement your income. I think there's a video I did on other ways therapists can make money beyond one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions. I'll leave it in the description box. You can check it out so that you don't feel trapped into having to see therapy clients for you to survive. I hope up to this point, this has been useful and it's helping you now start to think about how to set your therapy um, fees so that you do not play yourself. There are four things that you need to keep in mind, even as you think about everything we've just spoken about. And that is, number one, don't compare your price to other therapists unless the price meets your needs. I have heard of people who look at what is happening in the field, what is happening in their, um, in their city, in their town. They look at how much other therapists are charging and then they decide, now that the therapists are charging, let's say, 1,000 shillings per session, I'm going to charge 900 so that I can get more clients. Or now that therapists are charging 1,000, even me, I'm going to charge 1,000. Or I'm going to charge 1,100 just, uh, just to make a little bit more. I think that approach can be uh, a little bit tricky because different therapists have different business models. They have different expenses in their businesses. They have different desires in their businesses. They have different financial goals in their businesses. So you can't compare your financial goals to somebody else's because you don't know how they came up with their figure. Some of the therapists that you are comparing yourself to are trust fund babies. Some of them, they come from financially well-off families. Maybe some of them have a spouse 
who also has an income. So for them, they don't have to foot all their bills at home by themselves. Some of them, partners are fully responsible for the financial upkeep of the family. So for them, their private practice is not necessarily a place they're coming to make profits. They just want to have a private practice uh, for the experience. So money is not a big deal for them. They Maybe they have money from other sources, they have money from other businesses. Just because they are charging a certain amount of money does not mean that you should also charge the same because honestly, you don't know what their financial goals are. Do your own math, the one that makes sense to you. It's okay for you to look outside and see what other people are doing, but don't set your price compared to what other people are setting because you are going to find yourself in a very difficult position if the money that you're earning cannot sustain your business. You're going to shut down. Always remember that just because you're the cheapest therapist, it does not mean that you'll get more clients. Clients don't always make the decision to work with you based on just the price. It's not always about money. If it was always about money, the businesses that charge the least amount of money, the businesses that do not charge uh, for therapy services at all, they would have all the clients. If you can, read a little bit more about buyer psychology, consumer behavior, read more about why people make the decisions they make when they're trying to purchase a service like therapy from you. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that your charges will depend on where you practice. If you are in New York, your charges might be higher because of the cost of living in New York and the economy in New York. If you live in Johannesburg, your charges might be somewhere in the middle. If you're in Nairobi, it's gonna look very, very different than if you are a therapist in Moya Tebere. Keep in mind where you're practicing so that you know how to adjust your expenses to that location. The other thing you need to keep in mind is your financial goals. This is something that I have mentioned over and over in the course of this episode, you need to think about where you're going with this business and what your financial goals are in general. Do you plan to save, to invest, to retire, to purchase land, to buy a house, to buy a car, may get your own medical cover, get life insurance, or maybe you have kids, you don't take an educational cover for them. Saving when you are a business owner is not just about saving for your own financial needs, it's also saving for the needs of the business. And this is where having other sources of income comes in. There's a limit to how much money you can charge for therapy before your fees become just outrageous. Beyond that, the amount you charge sets a certain expectation. If you have clients whom you're charging 10,000 shillings for personal therapy, that client might start expecting you to perform magic and miracles in every session to justify that 10K that they have paid you. When somebody decides to work with you and you are charging a certain amount of money, they have a certain expectation. If you do not meet that expectation, they feel cheated. They feel like you duped them. And that's why most clients will come to the first session and probably leave because they're like, um, what was promised and what I got is very different. Something that I have heard and I think I should touch on is that some therapists have different fees for different clients. Some therapists offer a lower price to clients who are not well off financially and then they charge more to clients who are well off and this balances out the income. And this is to make sure that even people who are not well off can still access therapy. It is a noble thing to do. If you are in a position to do it, then more power to you. Something that you might want to think about if you decide to go this route is how will you know your client's financial status unless they tell you, are you going to look at them, see how they're dressed and decide this client looks like they have money, so I'm going to charge them a lot. Or how exactly are you going to determine which client needs to pay less and which one needs to pay more? If you decide to make the judgment, and determine this person looks like money so they can afford to pay more, then I don't have much to say to that. I mean, all the best. Something else I have seen other therapists do is charge higher rates for coveted time slots, evenings and weekends, holidays, and then they charge lower rates for other time slots. This could be because those times are not the most convenient for the therapist, and so they feel that they need to be compensated higher for going out of their way. It's like if you own a restaurant and you close at seven but then there's a special client who wants you to stay open till 10 p.m and they're willing to pay you extra for the time that you will spend being there past your closing time then some people might decide to take up that as a as a thing so think about that for yourself something that i have always had as my belief is that as you determine how much you're going to charge for your therapy sessions and as you determine how you're going to charge different clients the different prices for your therapy services be very sure that you would be very comfortable with your decision to charge them differently if your clients were put in a room together and they all told each other how much they were paying you for your services. I think I'm going to stop there. I've given you a lot of food for thought. I want to believe that this has been a helpful episode for you. If you need to speak to a financial advisor for you to understand what you need to do, 
go speak to a financial advisor. But don't set a price just because other people are setting the same price. I hope that you can use this time to sit down and think through your decision before you, you, you finalize it. I know a lot of questions might come out of this episode. And if you're one of the people who will have a question regarding these therapy fees and all these things, please send me an email at safespacearena at gmail.com. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you can leave a comment asking whatever question you have or letting me know if this was useful or not. In the description, there is a private practice starter pack that I have put together for therapists who want to start a private practice. Download that. It is free and share it with a friend who you think is interested in starting a private practice. Thank you to our um, therapists in the community who asked this question about how to charge for your therapy services. I hope this has been useful to you and I hope it will help you set fees that reflect your values, fees that help your clients find you. And if you have any questions regarding private practice, if you have any questions regarding becoming a therapist, if you have any questions regarding psychology and mental health in general, please send them to me. I am always open to answering them. I will see you on the next episode. Take care of yourself and take care of your mental health.